Well, uh, okay. Guess we can. No, thank you very much. Um, well, thanks a lot for the invitation. Um, uh, I did a study on motivation with uh, several uh, gymnasia. Is that you? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's uh, uh, seven of them, and we did a study on motivation, not uh, really to know more about motivation or what it is, but to see what helps in education to stimulate the motivation of uh, students. So, because there's a lot of knowledge uh, present, there's a lot of research being done, um, but we thought, well, if we want to, to have that kind of knowledge to, to, to um, make it accessible in practice, see how, what can we do in practice in our education which stimulates uh, the motivation of students. And uh, well, that's a central theme to the uh, of a theme to the program you also have. I heard. Um, in the program you have in September, and uh, that's why Bino you know, invited me to talk to you about this uh, this theme. And uh, what I would like to do is, um, well, just discuss the topic of motivation. I. Uh, made a presentation and I have some things I would like to share with you but it's also the reason why I'd like to sit down because mostly I would like to talk to you about it so if you see things hear things that uh, say something to you or there's a, if there's a question you have please share and we can discuss this and I think this way we can have a, a nice uh, discussion about the topic and uh, in the end I would also like to See, uh, I'm curious about the program you already made. I heard that yesterday you uh, uh, thought about what can we do in September, and maybe there's also ideas we can share about how can we make the program also uh, stimulate the motivation of the attendance. So can we use the principles that I will present, maybe also in the program in September, uh, as a final uh, wrap-up. Uh, and I would like to start because motivation is also a, a, sometimes a bit of a vague term. It's um, different uh, kinds of uh, ways you can, can look at it. So I'm curious about um, what motivation is according to you and also about what difficulties you experience right now with motivation in your school. So maybe you can say like two minutes with uh, your neighbor, discuss this a bit and then share uh, uh, share it with us. Yeah, so I'd like to take two minutes. Okay. Sure. Thank you. 
<laughs> shut it down. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, that's always the thing. If you ask someone to discuss uh, with each other, then <laughs> especially teachers, yes. Um, and I uh, realized that I forgot to introduce myself. Um, I did say I did a study, but that's not all of my work. I'm an independent researcher and consultant in education. So I help schools to improve their education. And also, I'm a teacher myself, but in a University of Applied Science uh, here in the south of the Netherlands as well. On the same topics, you could say. Uh, well, that's a bit about myself. But I'm curious about what did come up uh, on the question of what is motivation? What were answers you, you gave, or would you give on the question? To drive and want to do something. To drive to do something, yes. So it's something uh, of a person, it's internal, you mm. could say. Yeah. Okay. So the distinction between types of motivation, you could say. Yeah. Okay. Other things? Yeah. Willingness to do something. Yeah. Understanding yeah. 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 you have a goal, what you want to achieve, or you feel that you have to achieve. Yeah. But you want to achieve. Yeah. Um, well, if you want to, I'll be thinking 
Yeah. Okay. So what I hear is it's personal. So it's something of a person of, of themselves, you could say, and it can vary in what kind of motivation it is. It can be extrinsic or intrinsic. Yeah. I would like to go further on that later on. And the second question: What kind of difficulties do you experience in your education concerning motivation? Fear of failure. Fear of fail failure. Yeah. yeah. And what and what is the relationship with motivation for you? Yes, because sometimes people just are not motivated because they know they're going to fail, so they just don't bother. Because otherwise, they just give themselves up to failure anyway. They seem they just fail by doing nothing. Yeah. And try and fail. But yeah. then I suppose what? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's not, it's not a one-on-one. -on -one. You have to work for that. 
So what I'm, I'm hearing, what I think is very important to motivation is that the context is essential in what type of motivation uh, is being stimulated, you could say. So in the, in the difference between extrinsic and intrinsic, which I will go in depth uh, further on, but uh, the context is very important. So we, we're discussing right now that the, the society can have an important impact because uh, it is more short-term, it's based on results. Uh, uh, parents ask of their uh, children to, to have good results. And, and there's also something in the educational system, I think, which can also stimulate this type of motivation, which is more short-term based. So I think that is an essential part of, um, if you're thinking about the question, what can I do to motivate? Is what can what what type of context can I create, which stimulates the type of motivation I would like to see? And that's a, 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 a really different question than we were um, asking ourselves 50 years ago, based on the research and psychology right then, because then we were only thinking about how can we stimulate people, how can we how can we find the right stimulants so they do what we want them to do. And this is different. This is the question about what context stimulates people to motivate themselves. And it's a different kind of question. Um, and well, I made a small list about um, the problems with motivation in the Netherlands, because that's the only context I know. Uh, and there's a study available of the OECD, so that's a European study, I believe. Um, and can I ask a practical question? Yeah. Can we have a copy of your Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, I forgot to print it out, I realized, but uh, of course you can have a copy. Yeah. I'll, I'll distribute. And well, in, in, the, in the Dutch educational system, we see that uh, there's a, a, a bit of a strange thing going on because our results are pretty good. Well, this week there was a report saying that <laughs> it was not so, but uh, uh, <laughs> if we compare it to other countries, we are uh, we have a pretty good educational system based on results. And the strange thing is that if we look at the more process uh, kind of uh, types, like motivation, we uh, have a very low uh, score, you could say, compared to uh, other countries. So, which shows in that uh, students in the Netherlands are less ambitious, so they um, want to achieve less, they, see, uh, they, they challenge themselves less, you could say. Um, they lack perseverance. Um, so, uh, w w uh, someone said that also, uh, with you, or I don't know. Uh, the, the, the way that uh, they want to have short results, that's what, that's what you said. They want to have short results and they don't know how to, to stick with the problem invest time in it um, and learn from this way. And excellent students, which in this context is uh, like the gymnasia is uh, especially a problem, uh, are not challenged enough. So we see that we can, can motivate and stimulate the, uh, the students that need some extra support, you could say, who don't learn that easy, but the students who have a, a lot 
uh, of their capacity, they do not achieve more. They, well, they stay on the baseline, you could say. Um, and uh, teachers, in my experience in talking to teachers, uh, you hear a lot that uh, students have a low interest in the classes, in education, in the school. Uh, and curiosity, so they're not as curious anymore. If you show them something new, they always ask you a question, is this, is this going to be on the test or not? And not, oh, uh, interesting, could you tell me more about it? Um, and and which, which for teachers uh, gives them the feeling that they need to punish or reward. It's the only way to, to motivate or stimulate students. To, to go, well, if you do this, you get an extra point on your test, or uh, if you don't do, uh, do this, then you'll get a punishment, you have to stay late, or something. Um, which also uh, they show that uh, they see that students, well, they want to do the bare minimum. So they just want to do what is asked of them, uh, um, and after that, if, if they did so, then they think, well, now I'm going to do all the other things I would like to do, which is uh, going on Instagram or gaming or talking to my uh, to my friends. Uh, but there's, so there's not a lot of durable motivation, you could say. They're not sticking with the things they're uh, learning. Um, and, well, on motivation, if uh, the question and the answer is... I just have a question. Yeah. This is, well... I always wonder what, what what is really less motivated. I just, I just what did they ask the kids? Because it's always I'm curious. Was that you know I'm, I that the Dutch pupils would be less motivated than the French pupils or whatever, or the, or the, the Scottish, the Swedes, or whatever. Yeah. Or maybe they have no, I think it was uh, the, the comparison in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. I don't know the exact question they, they, they asked, but um, and it's not really, you could say that the, the motivation uh, of the motivation is different. So I can I'll, I'll, I'll explain later, but um, they see the, the problems like lack of perseverance. It's not really only a motivational problem, but that's something you can measure and you can ask in students, but also uh, uh, with teachers, what they see students do. Um, and it's a sign of that there's something, there's a problem with the motivation because there's a different type of motivation, I think, with students in the Netherlands, for example, um, which is more extrinsic, you could say, um, which is we, um, as an educational system or context, we mainly stimulate that type of motivation. And the problems that arise from this are a lack of perseverance and things like that. Yeah. So, uh, on motivation, uh, we just discussed it, and actually the, the definition, you could say, was in the group already. Um, there are two things that are very important to motivation. Uh, one is that there needs to be a personally, a personally relevant goal, which is the same as what we just said. It, it, it's something personal. It's some, not something you can do to the other, but it needs to be personal. And personally, a relevant goal can also be money or uh, other types of rewards or status, power, um, uh, compliments. This can all be a personally relevant goal, but it can also be because it's fun, it's interesting, that type of thing. Um, but when it's not personally relevant, there is no motivation. It's not only a goal. So if I, as I put, uh, it can be that as a uh, as a teacher, I have the goal that the student learns about history, but students can think I have the goal to get a high grade. So, and that's the personally relevant goal for the student. It's not learning history. It is the high grade. So history in this case doesn't matter. So it can be different from what the goal is of, in this case, the teacher. Um, and the other one is the confidence to attain this goal, which you said uh, there's a problem if, if you don't have the feeling that you can achieve it or you have a, a fear of failure, uh, you don't have the confidence that you can attain this goal. So there's all, in, in that case, there's also no motivation. 
because, uh, well, it's, you could say uh, it's a, a comparison to riding a bike. You, you have the possibility to ride a bike, you, you can ride a bike, but if you don't have the feeling that you can ride a bike, then you still won't do it. And that's also uh, an essential part of motivation. And these two combined make sure that you show the behaviors in, uh, that help you to attain the goal. Is that pretty clear? Mm -hmm. um, well, and as we said, um, there's an important difference in uh, viewing what you can do uh, to motivate someone, and that is that you can't motivate someone, but you can only uh, help them motivate themselves. Which is essentially different views. And I would like to explain this. Uh, why this is so, on the type of motivation. Well, you know this, uh, probably extrinsic motivation, and well, we discussed it already a bit. Uh, those are the things that are external to us. So those are extrinsic goals. Things like money, power, avoiding uh, a penalty or a punishment. Um, and this is a type of motivation. Um, and the other one, those are well known, is intrinsic motivation. An intrinsic motivation is shown in doing something because it's fun, it's interesting, you're curious about it, you want to learn something. And as you said also, uh, it's not that you are just extrinsically motivated or just intrinsically motivated, they can run through each other. But you can say you can be more extrinsic motivated or more intrinsic motivated, and well, that's that, that has an important impact on the results, and, but also the way you uh, experience uh, it. Because if it's more extrinsic, you could say, well, the, the task at hand was not really interesting. I only did it because I wanted to make money. And if it's more intrinsic, you could say, well, the task at hand was also fun to do. You could say, and they did this in a study with puzzles. And they ask uh, a group of people to do puzzles just to do the puzzle. And they ask a group of people to do puzzles, and if they uh, resolve the puzzle, they get a reward, money. And after that, they ask if they, if they thought it was fun to do. And the group of people who uh, got money uh, uh, found the puzzle to do less fun. So. Um, they thought, well, the, I only did it because I wanted to make money for this. And they didn't see any value in resolving the puzzle. <coughs> the only value it had so they could make money. And the other people had no other goal than just doing the puzzle. And so they had fun just doing the puzzle. And um, so there's a, an example of what it, why it's important to think about what types of stimulus do I create in the context of which, which and uh, what types of motivation this uh, supports. Because um, sometimes uh, we, we build in a, like a reward uh, just because it, it, with no really, yeah, how, how can I say it, um, uh, um, with the best intentions, you could say. Uh, but um, thinking about it can help to think, well, but maybe I'm also taking away something of the students. Maybe I'm taking away the chance to value this activity for what it is. And a good example I got from another gymnasia in Haarlem, which is in the west of the Netherlands. Um, they have a, 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 also a European meeting with students, and they um, uh, it's like a game, and they, they play uh, the United Nations. So um, there's from, I think, 15 different countries, students are coming to the Netherlands, and they play this game with each other in their schools, and they have a lot of fun doing it. And the students, they organize this meeting every year. And the school thought, well, um, we, we see that you put a lot of effort in this, and we want to reward you for this. Uh, so maybe you can use this, uh, this or, uh, the organization of this activity as an activity for school. Uh, so at the end, uh, uh, and we can maybe put a grade on it, or. At, at least so you can use this uh, as part of the curriculum. And students said, no, please don't, because that way we'll, it will be less fun. Because 
I'm just doing this because I think it's interesting. I think it's fun to do. I would like to meet all these other students in all the other in the different countries. And when it's part of the school, then 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 the the value of fun uh, goes to well, it has to be for a grade. So I have to be rewarded for the fact that I'm organizing this. So there's an example of, and in this case, students say this, <laughs> but a lot of times it doesn't happen. <laughs> a lot of That's a, that's a difficult question, and um, what at least research is showing that if you uh, do this enough, if you put enough rewards in it, then people expect a reward. Yeah. So um, if you're talking about perseverance and those types of things, you can uh, if you if you do, uh, give too much rewards or punishments, then perseverance uh, lowers. Uh, and, and the same goes for if, if I'm not getting a reward for an activity, I don't want to do it anymore. And we see this a lot in schools. So if, it, if it's not on the test, I don't want to do it anymore. Okay, because so this, this one is 50 right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, where's the solution? <laughs> well, it, it, it depends a bit on, 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 on the assignment in this case. But if, I think if, there's, if your goal is I would like them to have a, a, an experience and fun and and to, to talk to these other people and, uh, and see a uh, different context, uh, then there doesn't have to be a grade on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, for people who um, really want a grade, it's interesting to have a, have a, have a talk with them, because mm -hmm. why they think it's so important. Well, the layout is the success, that both is possible. You can have fun with it, because you're walking in that and then you go into the end of the process, and uh, to the uh, primary. And uh, to the cathedral, etc., etc. So it's just fun. Mm -hmm. uh, it also, we had uh, the assignment in such a way that we also can get a great point. Yeah. So, that's what it's difficult. We had an interesting example when we have a, a subject called science in our first and second year. <laughs> in our first and second year, and then uh, you know, yeah. And, and, and they, they, they have to clean up after the, after the, the hour that they have to do this work. So they didn't do it as, as well anymore, so we said we make it, uh, we make it tests, right? And, and, and clean up tests is a totally ridiculous idea, but our, our technical assistant uh, has creative ideas. It doesn't make a clean up test. So I had to write down what they have to do to clean up and then clean up afterwards. And they asked us, is this for points? Uh, this mm -hmm. is uh, the Dutch term for a grade is one of the terms is fun, point, huh? so they ask, is this for point? And we said, yeah, it's for point. <laughs> so that's crazy, really, they went crazy, really, really write down everything, clean up, it's, uh, it's crazy, and then, okay, so um, uh, do we have to hand it in? And then the, te the technical assistant guy, they said, oh, it's, uh, it's for point. So he went along the tables and he put like, oh, <laughs> no, he <laughs> put it, <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> And then they were like, oh, yeah. like hey, you know. <laughs> it's true, it's true. But, but if we are an institution, an yeah. institution where we have grades. Yeah. So we are in that context. Does it mean that we have to change? No, yeah, so, um, uh, uh, sorry, I don't want to say that we have to uh, skip grades, that we have to uh, uh, not give grades anymore. But um, it helps to think uh, in motivation that um, you can move for more extrinsic motivation to more intrinsic motivation. There, there are things you can do, which I'll, well, I'll discuss later, which can help um, give a different value to the grade. Because sometimes the grade is the only thing they want, and so the activity is not interesting in itself, eh? just like the puzzle. But there are ways to, to, to 
where you can still give a grade, but the value in itself has also of the, 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 the activity in itself has also value for the student. So I will continue on the, on the topic. Because um, uh, what I would like to add to, to this is that there is a shift in thinking about motivation. Um, because we were thinking a lot about, well, uh, people need to be stimulated. We discussed this a bit already, but there is a lot of in psycho uh, psychology research in in the 50s and uh, 1950s. Um, well, the statement they really made was people are lazy. They don't do anything unless they are stimulated to do something. And um, it's not only stimulated by other people, but stimulated in general. Like if, if, if something happens in your environment, you are stimulated to do something. So you're always reacting to a stimulus. Um, but they're saying that, that well, in, sorry? Dogs. Yeah, like dogs. Mm -hmm. It's the same. It's the behaviorism and the con conditioning. Yeah, soft love. But the central, central to this in the thinking about humans, and uh, you could say a view on humans, is that they are uh, intrinsically lazy. Uh, so they won't do anything unless stimulated. And well, you see a lot of this uh, thinking still in organizations, I think also in education, that uh, we need to put in stimulus, otherwise people won't work. Otherwise people won't learn, otherwise people so you see a lot of this still in the way we organize things. And the shift is that, uh, oh, yeah, sorry. But we also see, and we saw th in, in this discussion about what are difficulties, uh, that you see that this is only uh, value, uh, valuable when it's about simple tasks. So it's easy to stimulate someone to do a very simple task, like uh, in, a, in a factory, uh, you, can, you need to package several things. If you give them uh, a higher, uh, mo uh, more money, higher salary, then they pack more things. It's easy. Um, but there's also a low engagement, so you don't really care for the work you do, and uh, it's only based on results, and it's very short term. So short term meaning that if there's no stimulus anymore, then the behavior is not there anymore. If I'm not getting a, a salary, I won't work. If I'm not getting a grade, I won't learn. Um, and this is partly true because the other one, um, and we're shifting to, is that people are proactive. We, we see that in a lot of cases, then there's not really a stimulus from the outside that people think, well, I just want to do something. I want to explore. I want, I'm curious about my environment. Um, I have my own interests I want, um, uh, I will follow. And in this, you see a lot of creativity, you see a high engagement, uh, you see learning, and you see that it is durable. So it's durable meaning it doesn't need a lot of stimulus from the outside for people to do this. And I think you see this in students as well, because they're always, I think you have uh, several examples of where you don't need to do a lot as a teacher, and uh, students they uh, they do it because they think it's fun. I think the example of today where students are uh, well, <laughs> trashing in the <laughs> school. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, so the only thing you do is you give them a little space. You could say you could say, well, today is the day you could do this, and well, they take take care. No. So that's 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 the, that's important indeed that it's not only intrinsic or only extrinsic, it's mostly a mix. So most of the time uh, you do something because it's also interesting, but also because you get money. I think work is a very good example. Uh, I mean, uh, yes, but you said work is not always uh, intrinsic or extrinsic. Yeah. Uh, motivation is uh, when you have to do the work, but you 
proactive to contemplate well. When I don't uh, do this in my holidays, I will start having problems afterwards. Yeah. But that's also proactive. Thinking. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, there's a mix. Yeah. So I think work most of the time when you think you work. Uh, when you're working uh, in uh, the things that you want to do, yeah. like being a teacher, uh, then then you always see a mix. I'm also a teacher because I think it's interesting, and I also do it because I earn money. No, well, I think it's the reason. I mean, I mean, such a creating, high engagement, learning, and doing. I yeah. don't think it's always the same. It can also be expensive. Yeah. You have to have the high engagement, learning, and doing. Yeah. That's what I mean. The experience can also be. I think so. Yeah, well, that is part. I, well, I think it, it is true, and um, what helps for this because that's a good to the to, to the next step. Um, <laughs> it helps if, if what you're saying is that um, it is not only uh, always extrinsic or uh, always intrinsic, and it differs. And there are also types of extrinsic motivation which are very uh, close to intrinsic motivation, you can say. And if you want, uh, and for this, it helps to use some different language in motivation, mm -hmm. because extrinsic and intrinsic only say about the uh, where the goal comes from. So, it's, is it external to the task or is it internal to the task? So it, there's less value in those terms. Um, um, what helps is to talk about controlled motivation, which is this one. And you could say this is more intrinsic. So if you see extrinsic and intrinsic as two things, then controlled motivation is more extrinsic and less intrinsic. And in this case, you could say, broadly speaking, that uh, students show the correct Characteristics of it's more short-term based, it's more it is a low engagement um, because they only do it, they mostly do it because of the extrinsic rewards, the, the grades because they have to do it because uh, another example is also peer pressure because parents otherwise parents, other are them. parents are bugging them. So, but but there's also when that drops, when parents are saying, well, I don't care anymore then they think, well, then I don't have to go to school anymore. So you could, tie, uh, you could, could say that an, an environment can be more extrinsic and then you could say it's more controlled environment. So we're controlling our students mostly about what they have to do, why, uh, uh, how they do it, when they do it, uh, and this calls for this kind of motivation. And the other one is autonomous motivation. So I think that it's more intrinsic. And still, you can have extrinsic goals. So, in the activity you talked about, well, what, can we go uh, uh, to a different city, and uh, but can we also have a grade? Uh, it is possible, but it is important that the grade is not the most important thing of the activity. They have to value it because they think it's interesting, um, because they want to do it, and things like that. And you could type a, 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 a context or a school as more autonomous, stimulating more of the intrinsic motivation and less of the uh, extrinsic motivation. So okay. it's the choices you make that will actually yeah. sort of create the context. Yeah. Basically. So and 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 this and that's why I I don't want to say that grades are bad. I don't want to say grades shouldn't be there, but you uh, there there's a. a, a effort you have to do, I think, to make sure that the grades are not valued only as extrinsic, that they are valued also as intrinsic, as something, oh, this tells me if I did something well, or this tells me uh, if I did, uh, if I have some, some work to do, because it's not uh, good anymore. And a lot of students value it as, well, I have a, uh, it's, it's, it's enough. Uh, in the Netherlands, if, if you have a six, as a as part of a 10, or they say this is enough to pass the, the test, um, and now you can go on to the next topic. But in principle, I think, or at least my experience here, is that the kids in principle are interested in learning. That's very motivating to them if they have the feeling that they don't understand what's going on. Yeah. Right? It's not, not good. Mm -hmm. So it's 
there is a sense that they want to learn something if they're but uh, yeah how much effort will I put into it to learn everything or to you know, go further than maybe what's expected but they want to learn yeah and it, it, uh, the question is if, if, a, if a school system is geared towards more intrinsic motivation due to the fact that they make a certain context that creates that is it in fact so that the kids are in, are also more motivated so yeah well, uh, you can make decisions, uh, which I will go on later on, but uh, which help for uh, students to feel more intrinsically motivated. Yeah. And um, um, what you said, well, I think that they're uh, in, uh, essentially they are interested in learning. They want to learn new things. And that's also my world view of, of people, my human view. Um, but as we discussed, we you can do things which uh, reduce this. So they don't have the feeling anymore, that's why autonomous is in there, they don't have the feeling anymore that in this context they have an influence on what they're doing. So they they can make like a, well it's not really a rational decision, but they can make a decision for themselves at some point in, in school, they say, well, I don't feel any influence anymore, so I'm just doing what I'm being told. But that's only control because then it's only controlled behavior i'm only doing this because you're telling me i have to do this and then you have to resolve to punishment and reward to get something to get someone to do this because the personally relevant goal is not to do the task anymore but it's only to get that punishment or reward um, and um, so um, well you could say intrinsic motivation uh, uh, in, well, if you're a bit pessimistic, you could say you can only uh, make it less. You could say someone is highly intrinsic motivation, and you can only do things that uh, will thwart this uh, motivation. But that's a pessimistic view. And there's a lot of other things you can do. But um, um, well, thinking about well, how can we move from this controlled environment to a more uh, autonomous environment? Well, there's a, a, a big uh, theory on motivation, which is well known. I don't know if you know this as well, but it's called the self-determination theory of Jackie and Ryan. Is it familiar? Yeah. As a high, um, well, they did, I think, 40, 50 years of research on this topic, and they're saying that, well, the blue line, say the blue arrow, if you want to go from control to more autonomous. And self-determination is the key. Mm -hmm. well, I'm making a bit more simple than yes, but self-determination meaning that you are the agent of your behavior. You are the one having an influence on what you're doing and why you're doing it. And um, but this implies that the, the tip of our, um, the story line. That's, that's a basic thing, I think. Right? Yes. Whether you the you're hands there, over the decision to them, well, it's that serious. I mean, we try that in our study. You know, we have 16 to 19 year olds, oh, and even they have difficulties with it. Yeah. And then and we would see if we go even younger. And, and yeah. Well, uh, also, in this case, it's not like it's not the same as saying, "Well, now you have to choose. It's all up to you. Uh, this, uh, we're not doing anything anymore." It is the sense that you have self-determination. So it's it's something that you you, you feel as if you are self. So, <laughs> but it's not a, a trick. It's no, it's not a trick. No, it's very difficult to do, but. Um, uh, so you can also you, you you can help students to make a decision, um, but they have to you, you they need to have the feeling that they made yeah, the decision. Yeah, they need to have to make the decision. That's my point. Because I I often ask my children, what is your goal with this? Yeah. Uh, what do you want? Where do you want to go? Mm -hmm. Advice, uh, not advice. Where do you want to go? I don't know. But this is okay. Well, I don't know. But suppose, suppose you would, uh, I'm just thinking, uh, and maybe I'm thinking in terms of the, the pupils that are here that are pretty 
pretty smart. They, they, are, they are competent in acting, so to say. That is, uh, that you would say, well, that this is what we would like you to learn. Huh? Maybe you don't want to learn it, but uh, this is basically what you, what you need to learn. But you can do that in various different ways. Maybe they want to do it by themselves, or maybe they want to have you tell them how it, what it's all about, or maybe they say, give me a sign so I can find out if I already know it. I don't, uh, so, yeah, I don't know what would happen if you would do that. Uh, and, and one of the things that, that I, I, I certainly am the type that will now tell them how to do things. Uh, but I'm wondering if I wouldn't do it, what would happen? Would they, would they all of a sudden not learn it anymore? Or, or would they uh, come up with their own strategies? Or uh, how would they go about it? And perhaps if they would need to find out more like that by themselves, and they can come to me if they need help or whatever, then it might work. And, and then I may think, well, not all of them will do that. Some of them will, will be maybe not so much able to do that. And I, then you can also say, I mean, well, there are pupils now that are not able to work in the system I use. Huh? So yeah. that's still, still you have to deal with construction because of course. Two, you, you can't do it alone, that's just one. And the two have to have, uh, have some explanation. And then uh, the other one you can take by the hand, two or yeah. three. But try to uh, different, differentiate in your class between three groups. I think it's a whole lot of work. Yeah, yeah, that's perhaps that's the kind of work you wanted to, uh, to go to, instruction, but you still have to be very structured as a, uh, uh, as a teacher. Or in the other case, the teacher will do anything. Yeah, structure is, is important. Yeah. I think that's important. I think that that helps but to. You don't fool them or something. It's not no, it's not. It's not. Not, it's not a trick. No. Um, because if you make it a trick, then it won't work. Oh, they're too smart for that. <laughs> they're too smart for that. Yes, but uh, I think your comment helps in the question you arise. It is not about the 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 one moment where you ask them what are is you, uh, what do you want to do, what are your goals, and can you determine them for yourself. It is. In general, do you feel in this environment that you are self-determined, that you can influence what happens here and what, what, what you're doing here? So if in school, generally speaking, you think, well, it doesn't matter what I want, I always have to do what I'm told, then you're not feeling self-determined anymore. And if you have a sense for, well, I'm going to school and some things uh, they, they, they want me to do, but there are a lot of things I can do for myself, or if I ask, can I leave a bit early, or I, if, then you have a feeling that you can influence this context. And, and this is very interesting, because we are talking about IQ and EQ. Yeah, 
for me. And they usually say that actually a human is 80% EQ, emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. and we are working actually mostly with IQ. Yeah. So this is about getting in the IQ level. Yeah. Yeah. Into this. In the, in the EQ level. Yeah, yeah emotional yeah. intelligence into handling the IQ. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we there's a split between giving them freedom to come into school and to study in you know, a non contact setting in school, to say you must be in school in a non contact setting, you must be supervised study. Um, how, how do they react to that? It's interesting. Some of them buy into it, do they? Others just shut down. Yeah. You know, there's that rebellion. You tell me what to do, they want to do that. Again, um, uh, they call this the process of internalization. So, if there's something that you want, uh, that, that you ask of students, if you want them to do, uh, like learn history or something, then uh, the self determination helps them to internalize this goal. And it's not a trick, again. So, if, if it was this easy, then we were already doing it. But um, uh, it can help them see the value of this goal because they can value it because they know well if I do this then I can go to a good school after this uh, my education or uh, I think it's fun so uh, or um, uh, they want me to do a history but uh, I can decide when I'm taking the test or uh, these type of things help them to see well um, uh, I see why this is important for myself. So they internalize uh, this extrinsic uh, goal, you could say. Am I being clear? Mm -hmm. no, okay. <laughs> um, well, and to build on, on what helps this process of internalization, self-determination, there are three basic human needs they, these researchers describe as human rights. They say, well, every human has a desire for autonomy, which says, Oh, I will go into that later. Competence and relationship. Um, autonomy is um, the urge to determine the way you achieve your goal. So you want to be the agent of your uh, behavior, as I said before. Um, so again, there is no autonomy if you are being told when, where, and what to do. There is no way you can decide for yourself what you're doing. At, in, in such an environment, um, but there, if there are things that you can decide for yourself, um, then that stimulates autonomy. Um, competence is the desire to explore, so to learn things, to develop yourself, and also to experience mastery, to experience that you are good at something. Um, so what helps in this case is, 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 is positive feedback, saying that that you, and this, this really helps in the sense of um, I'm capable of doing something. So as we said before, uh, the personally relevant goal and the confidence to attain this goal, competence is really on the field of confidence that you can attain this goal. Because you have the feeling that you are capable of something. And relatedness is the one to, to interact and be connected to others. Because, and this is really, I think, um, something we uh, don't value as much, but the relationship between teacher and student, but also between students, is very important for their motivation. Uh, and peer pressure can be an example, which also can be a negative example, but it's also a positive example. And I think the passion you stated before, like I'm a passionate teacher about my subject, helps in the part of relatedness, helps in the part of, well, 
this person really cares for this topic, I think it's important, he also cares for me, he wants me to be interested in this, and this really helps the process of, well, this is not something they only just want me to do, but it is also interesting to do. And to reflect on what am I doing in my practice, and you can say, oh, well, one, I'm doing this. I'm there are several occasions when I've provided choice and I help them to win. So maybe this is not a type of intervention I'm looking for to get to a different motivation. But oh, maybe oh yeah, well I'm not. Sh maybe I'm not showing a lot of appreciation. Maybe I can do something. So it can help you to choose in uh, what can I do in this context differently, maybe to stimulate different kind of motivation. Um, yeah, you could say, well, there's enough challenge in this, right, this particular course, so I'm not going to do anything in challenge, but I'm going to do something in relationship. Yeah. Uh, okay. Shall we maybe move on to the yeah. uh, discussion on the program? And I'll, I'll just put, put up uh, some global ideas. I do have a final slide, right? Yeah, but oh, it's sorry. not... No, it doesn't really matter. Right. It's not really something new. <laughs> it's all the things that uh, what they came across in our discussion. But some additional findings in our study were that uh, the autonomy is a very easy first step because it's always easy to, to, to give some choice to students. You can say, well, you can choose to uh, hear my lecture, me giving an instruction, or read the book. There's a, there's a choice for students. But uh, So that's easy. Uh, and also, it's really not sufficient. So, uh, thinking, well, uh, I gave them a choice in this le uh, in this lesson, in this class. Uh, well, now they're really intrinsically motivated, and we're done. It isn't that easy. Um, but it is a very important first step, because, as we said, self-determination and autonomy, those two are very close to each other. So giving a sense of influence is a very important first step. And then we have the... the with that, we have the program, and we have to follow. So, the pupils can't decide. There is a limited amount of things they can decide, because there is a limited amount of things that I, as a teacher, yeah. can decide. Yeah. yeah, so, but I think in, in all cases, there are always, there's also some room for a decision, and it can be on process or on outcome. You can say, well, you can choose which outcome you want, but you can also choose the way you want to achieve this outcome. So you could say, well, most of the things that we uh, as a teacher need to do are outcome-based. You need to learn about this, but you don't really matter how they learn that, the process of it. So you can give them a choice about, do you want to learn it now, or do you want to do it in the next hour, or you can give a lot of freedom in the way they are going to achieve those outcomes. And there's a lot of autonomy there. And right now, a lot of times we're saying you have to be at this hour in this classroom with these students, with this teacher, and you have to do this. So there's the choices are very limited for the students in this case. So you can give maybe a bit of choice back to them, which can help them the outcome. Yeah. Um, well, uh, another thing we found was testing an examination it can be very frustrating for the autonomous motivation because uh, well, you, you can do a lot about it, but um, at least in the Netherlands you could say testing is very important because the grades are leading in the way uh, if students go to the next year, if they get the diploma, so there's a lot of value on the grades. and uh, so it's, it's, it's sometimes it's hard to do interventions that are more based on a different kind of motivation because students <coughs> feel or sense that all that is really important are their grades. So um, then you get a lot of questions like, is this going to be on the test or do I get a grade for this? Because otherwise they just won't do it because they know that that actually is the only thing that really matters also for their parents or things. This in, uh, in thinking about uh, getting more to autonomy, uh, autonomous motivation, it can help to think about how can our testing and examination system 
support you more because it can frustrate a lot but it can also support you more and again not saying that we have to skip grades but there is a big influence of testing on this type of motivation so if you're thinking about well what can i do as a more like a grand intervention in our whole school my suggestion would be look at the way you are examining and testing the students and the other one well relatedness is overlooked i think because a lot of the motivation we're talking about autonomous motivation can really come also from the relationship you have with the students with the teacher uh, so there's a very strong impact uh, and a lot of times we just think well it's on uh, the most important ones are, are autonomy and confidence we have to give them the feeling that they um, are good at something and a sense that they can have influence on what they're doing but also relationship is also very important all right so for okay thank you very much thank you very yeah. much and then to the program. Yeah, well, the idea was that uh, since you are here, stay home, that uh, we, uh, we have uh, talked about uh, your possible involvement or uh, take a step, step in the, in the uh, action.